Slow Hockey. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, continuing this, uh, these little uh, simple videos on uh, Arduino and different things to do. Um, you know, we've done uh, we've done a few things. Uh, the last one was the LCD and touch screens and whatnot. And you know, hope that helped you guys some. Uh, but uh, today I thought I'd talk about uh, wireless communication, uh, more specifically RF uh, radio frequency communication. Uh, using an Arduino. When I first started out with this stuff, uh, I started using the simple little radios. Um, this basically has a transmitter and a receiver. Uh, very simple stuff. You can send out bursts of data, and, and these work really good if you're, you know, within a, a very short range. Uh, say, put something kind of out in the backyard within about, you know, uh, 20 feet or so uh, if you're going through walls maybe straight line you can you can definitely get a lot more out of these but they're they're not real high powered but for projects and stuff and communicating from room to room and stuff these work really good and they're dirt cheap and uh, then if you want to step up a little bit went to these these are long range uh, these will go um, they're supposed to go about two and a half miles um, real world use, eh, not that great, but uh, they are a lot more powerful uh, than the other ones, and these are coded as well. Um, you can um, basically set um, each one to the other one so that they can be uh, almost like a, uh, a security type thing. No one can can uh, access the information transmitted by these and so there's a lot more longer you know a lot longer range and stuff and, and these are pretty good radios as well and then you can step up and get into the more expensive ones and that would be the XB's uh, this one is just your standard uh, S1 but I also have the S Pros I know there's different ones but uh, I've always I've kind of liked the more professional ones. They seem to be a little bit more reliable, and I don't have nearly the connection issues on these. And you know, to use these, you're going to need some sort of a, you know socket or a board to uh, to connect these to. This one uh, will mount directly to a Arduino board, so you can take uh, your standard Arduino Uno and it will connect directly t on the board directly on the board and uh, you can access it that way uh, but there's many other options when it, in it when it comes to this uh, I have another one here that just has where you plug it into a breadboard and you can access it that way so these work really good but uh, setup time on these uh, are a big pain in the butt. Um, matter of fact, I spent several weeks getting these things to finally get set up to, to create the mesh network I wanted, but not using the typical mesh net. My, my needs were a little bit more specific, so if you're running pretty much the out-of-the-box experience, yeah, it's not that bad, but mine unfortunately was more specific than that. And then we come to my all-time favorite, the NRF 24L01s. Uh, this one is the plus version. Uh, these things are very, very reasonable. Uh, you can usually pick these up for a couple bucks from China. Um, they work very, very well. Uh, the setup's actually very, very easy. Um, you can do tons of different networking. Uh, you can do uh, kind of a pseudo encryption type communication. Uh, you can do, uh, there's some cheats that I've, I've figured out on reducing background noise, getting code through. Uh, there's a lot of really neat things you can do with these. And then they also come, um, you have your uh, SMA version, which definitely gives it uh, a little better uh, signal quality. Um, but if you really want the best, uh, you want to get the ones that have the booster, the amplifier on it. Uh, and those work really well but they all use the exact same sockets the exact same code exact same everything so if you develop for one and you want to get one more power that's more powerful you don't have to change anything to your code you just pull one out pop the other one in and away you go now to use these you can 
either order uh, basically a socket adapter uh, from any vendor in China and you just socket these things and then you connect up here and you connect these to your Arduino, connect it to power and put in your code and away you go and this will level out the voltage. One thing about these is the voltage is very 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 specific so you have to make sure that you have a very very steady voltage going into this board or it won't work right and that's where this regulator comes in. Now if you're working on something where you can kind of control the voltage or you're just experimenting and you want to do it cheap uh, you can always just build your own little socket like I did here. Uh, this was just in the early days before I wanted to invest too much money. I just grabbed me one of these guys, made me a little socket and plopped that on here and away I went until I figured out it was something that was worth using. And uh, once I did, then I ordered a bunch of these guys, and I haven't looked back since. So these are really, really, really nice. Um, setting these things up and getting the code to working is extremely complicated for the most part. Um, with the exception of this, these, and these. Now, these they're fairly tough to get working. Uh, it took me quite a while but once I did it was fine. If you're going to use it to transmit data. If you want to use this as a function th there's, it's, it's simple. If you just want to, there's four, di four digital pins on here. If you just want to activate one pin, say you have four things, you want to activate four devices you just send a high signal to one, high signal comes out the other, and you're done. That's that's it. Now, if you want to encode data on these things, and say transmit text, transmit anything like that, uh, forget it. These are so complicated it ain't even funny. It's all virtually impossible. All these others are capable of transmitting data. If you want to transmit data, these work great after a long long setup time. But in any case, let's look at what it takes to get these things set up and running. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. This is the setup basically. You're gonna have your NRF, NRF 24L01 radio set into an adapter. You're gonna have it wired up here power coming here, power coming over to the board, and all wired in here. And this is how you're going to do it, because you're going to need two of these setups, right? So this is going to be one. So you're going to take your Arduino Uno board, your radio, and your socket, okay? And I like using these, I like using the color-coded wires because it's easier to uh, keep track of. So. In this particular example, uh, the way the uh, sketch that I use is set up, we're going to be taking the brown is going to be connected to number 13. You have brown to 13. Okay. Then you have the blue one is next. That's going to be on 12. Then you're going to have the orange is going to be on 11. Okay, and then we're going to skip one on yellow, and yellow is going to go to 9, okay, and then green is going to go to 8. Alright, so there's that. Then we're going to have ground, and you're going to go, it doesn't really matter if you go to, to if you're using a socket, if you're using one of these sockets, it does not matter if you go on the 3.3 or the 5 volt rail. If you're not using a socket, you cannot put any more than 3.3 volts into the radio directly, or it will burn it up. It will not function. So we can just go with the 5 volt, and we can go with the ground. Okay. All right. Now we wire up one of these sockets. Okay. You'll notice that on here you have your CE, CSN, SEK, MO, MI, 
an IRQ. The IRQ is not used on these things. Um, it could be enabled uh, for very, very advanced stuff, but for the most part, not going to be necessary. Okay, so you're going to take your blue one, which is going to be, what is that? Uh, blue one is 12. So 12, pin 12, is going to be on your MI. Okay, so that's your MOSI in. Um, your MOSI out, which is orange. Orange goes to 10, right? No, 11, sorry. Goes to 11, so here's your MOSI out. Okay, your SCK, which is brown, goes to 13. So your brown is next. All right. Your next one is your CSN. Okay, and that is going to be your yellow, which is number nine, pin nine. And last but not least is your CE, which is your enable and that's going to be on your pin 8. Okay, So that's how you're going to connect this guy. Alright, then you're going to put down here, which is fairly self-explanatory on the board, which is VCC, voltage in, and ground. So the black's going to go on ground, and your white's going to go on VCC. And there you have it. Then once you get all that hooked up, you can just pop your radio in and you're good to go. So now we have two systems set up uh, the same. Now we need to get uh, make a sketch to make one the sender and one the receiver in this particular example. And we're going to have the receiver power these three LEDs and we're going to use the computer to send commands to this to make it do functions and you could take that same philosophy and put in buttons or touch screen however you want to do it but this is base this is the basic um, way to get this operating and you can build use this as uh, building blocks to go even further if you'd like to okay so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set up the receiver so we'll just plug this guy in we have a nice little red light on here so we know our board is active and we're going to fire up the computer here okay so we're back here onto the computer and uh, we are into our Arduino IDE and the first thing to get these things set up is you're going to need to include um, these libraries uh, you're going to need the SPI library your NRF 24L01 and RF 24 libraries, uh, which are going to be, um, if you look up the radios, you can easily find these libraries. Just include them in your library, and uh, once you do, you type in include, put this in there, and if it clears, you're good to go. Uh, printf is also required if you want to see uh, the printout of the radio uh, statistics and things like that. So we're going to need to set up our radio on uh, channel. Uh, we're, we're set up on pin 8 and 9. And then we're going to need to set up our pipeline, uh, which we're going to use two pipes on this, uh, send and receive. Uh, you can do multiple pipes um, to do many different things if you want to. Uh, if you're running sensors, uh, temperature, uh, humidity, different things like that, you can have constant transmission between the two as well as a data pipeline for commands and different things like that. So there's a lot of really uh, neat things you can do with these radios. Uh, but what I like to do, uh, I came across this a long time ago. Uh, it works really well. I've used other, you know, other ways of doing the channels and they work sometimes, they don't work, but this has been very dependable for me. All I do is I come in and I change these numbers here, like the 3 and the 1, uh, if I want different channels for, you know, have radios and, and on different uh, pipes and stuff. And that's all I do. I leave everything else the same. I've been reusing it for quite a few years now, and it's worked really well. Now, a lot of this stuff is just going to be for the actual sketch itself. Uh, there are examples out there you can come across. Uh, I just found some and started you know picking and choosing different things and found out what would work uh, far as far as the uh, sending part of it 
as long as you set up a, a you know you set up your variables with plenty of room uh, you won't have any problems with overflow or anything like that so you can basically basically just kind of set this stuff up kind of like this and then down when you get down to your setup uh, you want to set up for serial communications uh, to your IDE or to anything else basically but you want your serial so you want your serial to begin I always like the higher speed serials myself but uh, some people do some people don't it's completely up to you uh, but you want to start your print F which will print out all the statistics of this code here we're going to about to get to then you do radio begin which turns your radio on and then you want to make sure that uh, you set your speed uh, you can do uh, one megabit per second if you'd like uh, it makes the transmission faster uh, but the problem with that is you lose a lot of dependability when you do that I back it down to 250 kilobytes per second it works really good but uh, it, it's 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 slower but it doesn't seem to have a problem with what you know I'm just streaming you know commands it's no big deal and it's very very dependable we want to set our uh, transmission to maximum and I usually just set like a channel 70 or somewhere in the upper spectrum you can pretty much you could put channel 10 channel 5 whatever you want to do uh, as long as both all the radios communicating to each other are on the same channel now you want to enable dynamic payloads if you're going to be doing uh, you know any kind of a variable uh, command structure um, anything like that dynamic just makes it a lot easier you can set up static or you can just turn it off it makes it a lot harder later on in your code and it really doesn't have a performance hit that I can tell um, setting retries um, these radios with their they're transceivers so when they send data from one radio to the other you're always going to get a response uh, you're going to get an ACK the acknowledgement coming back uh, to say yes I got the data everything was fine now these are set up where they can retry 15 times before they time out and they stop trying uh, they can go into a complete loop where they get locked up and you have to hard reset them uh, or you can just have it drop out and uh, especially if you're trying to set up a, you know you're trying to find out what range it is you can move the radio around and uh, once it finally starts receiving then it'll start working otherwise it'll lock up and you have to reset it and then uh, we're going to set up our length at 16 bits uh, here and then we're going to first we're going to open the writing pipeline as pipe 0 and then we're going to have the reading pipe as pipe 1 so we're going to start the radio uh, in the listening mode and then we're going to have it print out the details so we can tell that if the radio is working and that it's on the proper channel and everything's good then what I like to do is uh, just as a feedback for debugging I just have it print back that it's it's working so you delay a little bit let everything settle and work or settle and let the radio come on and the amps turn on everything else happen then you go down to your loop which this is pretty much what is going to work here so you're gonna have the NRF receive and you're gonna have serial receive so it's gonna be listening for a signal coming in over the radio and listening for a signal coming in over the serial now down here is where uh, the uh, sender is going to uh, uh, have the most impact is down here where you're going to have the serial event. Now the serial event basically all it does is when you go up here into your serial monitor up here it's going to whatever you type in up here it's going to print out down here and uh, tell and then send it out over the radio. So that's kind of what this is. Uh, you can pretty much find this type of stuff almost anywhere. Um, most of this stuff I got from a person quite some time ago and it was, let's see what is it, uh, it was a RF24 texting and you can get it texting with no LCD or with an LCD. Um, that was what I used, uh, that was the basis for a lot of this stuff. And I forget the gentleman's name but uh, you know, it was really nice for him to write a lot of this stuff up, and like I said, I, I took what I what I needed and uh, made what I could. Now down here is for your NRF receive. This is actually not even going to be used in any of this um, because we're only sending. Now down here in your serial receive, uh, what this does is it will 
once it comes in and completes a string from your uh, from the serial um, it's going to set it up as a payload for a send payload and set up your buffer it's going to swap the read write pipes for your radio it's going to stop listening and then it's going to send it out so it's going to be radio write send payload and the string length is going to be whatever the character uh, count is of the payload then it's going to come out and it's going to say I sent and what the payload is and then once it's done it's going to go down here switch the, the pipelines turn the radio back into listening and it's going to clear all the buffers and it's going to end so that's your sender um, fairly simple little sketch uh, fairly bulletproof for the most part so what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that uh, first of all I'm going to go over here check and make sure that it's all good it compiled correctly and then we're going to go down here and we're going to go board we're on uno and then we're going to go down here and make sure we are on a port all right so we have our this one here is going to be our sender so we'll go ahead and we will upload this okay uploaded all right the board reset so then we can open up our serial and there we go gives all of our information tells us what try transmit channel is on and gives us all of our relevant information uh, we're set up 250 kilobytes per second 16 bits we're on the radio set to high and the NRF sender is working okay so that is what we need to do for the sender now for the receiver this one's a little bit different We have our receiver over here, and we are going to plug it in now so we can program it. All right. Now, the receiver, same kind of setup for the most part on the top. Um, you have the same libraries and everything, same pinout. Uh, we're going to use the radio on 8 and 9. Uh, pipelines are exactly the same. All of the buffers and everything is the same. The only difference is, is that we're going to be using some different uh, variables here. We're going to have uh, integer i, so we need to declare that. We're going to have a receive value string. We need to uh, declare that. We're going to have some LED pins, 4, 5, and 6. And then once we go down here, we need to set the pin modes up. So we need to set that up, the 1, 2, and 3 pins as outputs and the rest of this is exactly the same as the sender okay so we're not going to use a serial output on this um, to tell it's on now for the loop here all we're going to do is receive so we're going to have NRF receive and then we're going to have uh, digital write all the pins to high which will shut them off and then we go into our receive loop so first of all, we're going to set up our length at zero. Start off completely fresh every time because this is going to be a specific thing. So if there's junk in the transmission, we want to flush it out every single time. So first of all, it comes in and says if the radio is available. Okay, we're going to set up that uh, the boolean is that done is going to be set at false. So in other words, it's not done. So when we come into our wait state here for while you're gonna say while it's not done then you go and then you set up the length is gonna be your dynamic payload size so you don't have to worry about setting that up and then your done equals your radio your radio read uh, receive value at your length okay so now all that's set up delays five milliseconds microseconds and then we have a a little let's see if I can get this a little bigger here all right here we go so we have this setup basically what this is a little small loop and we have our I is our integer okay so if I equals zero and I is less than one then I will equal one plus one and then we're gonna have receive value equals reset receive value receive payload I so in other words however long the code is you will put over here so if it's seven digits you're gonna have it going to seven 
and it's going to read, it's going to continually build, build and put into receive payload each individual character. So it can be received payload zero is going to be the first character of the data and there on and there for and, and, and thereafter. So if you have seven digits, you're going to have 0 through 6 is going to be your actual data. Once it gets to 7, it'll be 0, so it ends. And so you'll have a six character you know, um, data. Then when you go through it and you can start deciphering what you want, what you're going to use with that data, however it is, you can come down to here and use your receive value substrings. So like we're only using a single digit, so it's zero. Okay. So in this example, it's just going to zero to one. It's collecting one bit of data, and then it's going to go through the comparison to see what to do with that one bit of data. So down here we have receive value substring 0. If it equals 1, then it's going to light up LED pin 1. It's going to delay for 500 microseconds, and then it will clear the loop and be done. Okay. Uh, if it doesn't equal 1, it'll go down and compare it to this one or this one, which is 2, 3, 4, there on and so forth, all the way to the end. Now down here, this is for debugging, so I can see and, and may verify the code, but it's so that if once it receives anything above a zero, no matter what it is, trash or anything, it'll say I received and whatever the payload happened to be. Uh, so that way I can see if there's any interference. There's not, so we're good to go. Then of course you delay five milliseconds, just let everything settle, and then you clear all your buffers, including your receive value. If you don't, each time it comes around, you're going to have stuff in the buffer that you don't want there, because you're wanting very specific um, characters for you to compare to. Alright, so that's pretty much it for your receive. Fairly simple sketch, but it took me a long time to come up with this kind of code that's very specific that will always work. Alright, so first we're going to check and make sure that the code is good. It's good. Let me go over here and make sure we're on the right port and we are not. Oh, actually, let's check the board. We're on a UNO board port let's go to port O alright and then we upload alright now we are good alright so we are going to take this off now so this is coming off the data and we're going to put this and plug this into regular power here can't see through the camera there we go all right, so here are here is our LED. Let's see if I can put this up here, so we can see all this at once. All right, so here's this and this. All right, now we're going to plug our sender in over here. So this is going to be plugged in to the computer. We set it a little ways away so it doesn't interfere. Okay, now. We want to get on our serial ports. We want to make sure now that we switched it. Okay, we're good. So we're going to open up our serial monitor. Okay. All right. So now, if we send one, LED one comes on. If we send two, LED two two comes on. If we send three, three comes on. If we send four, okay. It strobes that way. We send five. It strobes that way. And you can keep doing this as many times as you want, however you want, want you know, anything you want. But this is how to get basic things through the radio and have it perform all kinds of functions. So I hope this helps you. I hope you like this video. Uh, please give me a thumbs up if you liked it. Thumb down if you don't. And please tell me why. Uh, if you like my channel, please subscribe. Uh, and if you guys like these things, I'll keep making them. I have tons and tons of stuff here, and I've spent years and years on these things. And quite frankly, I don't mind teaching someone if they want to learn. So you guys take care, and see you next time.